half minute uh, opening speech. Uh, the orthodox view of salvation is based not upon a few uh, scattered texts in the book of Acts, but particularly what is taught in the epistles, namely particularly in the book of Romans, which is the passage aforementioned. Here we find that the Apostle Paul is arguing that salvation, the gospel of salvation by grace alone through faith alone, is what saved Abraham before the giving of the law, and it's what saved David after the giving of the law. Thus the way of salvation, according to the book of Romans, and then it's repeated in the book of Hebrews, has always been only one way, which is the way of faith, apart from the works of the law. If salvation were essential to salvation, then it would have to have been essential in the Old Testament, or circumcision would have to be essential to salvation in the Old Testament, and that would immediately exclude every woman from being saved. Now when we come to the subject of what formula do you use to baptize somebody in, I'd like to offer a $500 reward if anyone can show in the New Testament where anyone was baptized using the words, quote, I now baptize you in the name of Jesus, or I now baptize you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. What you do find in the book of Acts is that no formulas were used. The Trinitarian formula is not quoted. I now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Neither do I find a single instance of the Jesus-only formula used. What you find is the term, they were baptized in the name of Jesus, and then another time it says, in the name of the Lord Jesus. Another time it will say, the Lord Jesus Christ. Since there's no consistency in the terminology, there is no formula. You do not find it in quotation. What you do find is the phrase, in the name of, and as Dr. A.T. Robertson points out in his commentary on the book of Acts, it means by the authority of, as in Matthew 10:41, by the authority of the name of the prophet. So if I came and said, open up in the name of the law, it means not the word law, but it means by the authority of. Thus we find that in, for example, in the teaching of the Twelve, one of the earliest Christian writings, on one side of the page it says they were baptized in the name of Jesus. Then you turn to the other side and you find out they were baptized. Now it's in quotation referring to the formula uh, with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So that the early Christians recognized that when someone was baptized, they were baptized by the authority of Jesus Christ. And Matthew 28:19 is where we find out how to baptize them. For we are told in terms of the ellipsis of the Greek construction there, Baptize them in the name of the Father, and in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Ghost. The word name not being repeated because it's not necessary when you have an ellipsis construction in the Greek. And taking Granville Sharp's rule number six, which says that when you have a series of nouns, and this, in this case has to do with proper nouns, connected with the word chi, with each of the proper nouns having a definite article in front of it, it must refer to three separate persons. This is just a matter of Greek grammar. Okay, rebuttal time for the United Pentecostal right. believers. I would like to respond to the authority that you brought up about the name being the authority. First of all, the only way that you can evoke the authority is by using the name. For example, if I would give you a check uh, to draw from my checking account at a bank, then the only way that you would have authority to pull that out of the bank is my signature on the line. When it said, in the name of Jesus Christ, the only way that you can evoke the authority of God's salvation to us and God's blessings to us is to use that name. The name is singular in Matthew 28:19. It is singular there and given to us later by those who first knew what it meant, and that is the apostles much earlier than any document that is not inspired that might have come after the apostles' days. The early church was consistent. More than that, they were consistent throughout the epistles. It is always baptized into Christ. Or perhaps uh, as many, uh, we are buried with him in baptism. And so there was a consistency of saying, everywhere you talk about baptism, it is baptized into Christ, baptized into the name of Christ, or in the name of Jesus, and Jesus is that. You said there's no consistency. The name Jesus is the consistent one of all of the formulas, and that name is to be used. For that name alone is the name of God's salvation to us today. Okay, that's the end of the rebuttal time. Now you'll have a three-and-a-half-minute uh, speech.
First of all, baptism is a new covenant experience. The Old Testament saints were saved just as we are in the sense that by the grace of God through faith as they express an obedience based on the atoning sacrifice of Christ. They were never given a command to be baptized. Therefore, it was not relevant in Old Testament times. They were given specific things. Uh, he, Hebrews 11 and 7 says that by faith, Noah was moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house, and thereby he became the heir of the righteousness, which is by faith. In other words, if he said, yes, Lord, I believe you, but I think you're just going to save me. I don't see any reason to uh, do what you say. Then he would have drowned. So his faith, his salvation, his faith was expressed in doing what God said to do. And that's all we're saying in 1 Peter 3.21, using Noah as an example, says the like figure whereunto baptism doth now also save us. And we understand that it's through faith that it does, based in Jesus Christ. Now, let me deal a little bit more with the authority. We find that uh, Jesus, not only uh, the, the Bible, not only talks about being baptized in Jesus' name, but Jesus told his disciples to pray in his name, to pray for the sick in his name, to cast out demons in his name. And when we go to Acts 3, where they actually prayed for someone, they said, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Greek has to say regarding the name as used in the book of Acts. Uh, you'll immediately recognize the lexicon of Bauer, Arndt, and Gingrich, which is the published by the University of Chicago Press, the most well-known uh, authoritative source today. And it says about the various phrases of the Greek in Acts, when Acts 2.38, this means when someone's name is mentioned or called upon or mentioning someone's name. Acts 10.48, while calling on the name, while naming the name, in many passages it seems to be a formula. Also, uh, he gives a translation, be baptized or have oneself baptized while naming the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, then going on to 1 Corinthians 6.11, through or by the name, the effect brought about by the name is caused by the utterance of the name. So uh, the Greek text supports that the name was actually invoked. Acts 22.16, the, the Greek verb there is very specific regarding the invocation. Let me just read you a number of translations. The interlinear, invoking the name of him. Uh, another translation, while invoking his name, with invocation of his name, by calling upon his name, and invoke his name, as you call upon his name, by calling upon his name, to call upon for oneself, to call upon by way of adoration, making use of the name of the Lord. These are various translations or comments on this Greek term. And so that's all we're saying is that when we baptize, we should baptize in Jesus' name. Now, regarding Matthew 28, 19, uh, Granville Sharp rule does not say that it has to be three persons. Anytime you see Kai connecting, it doesn't have to be persons. We recognize there are three designations, but nowhere does that rule demand that those designations have to be persons in the Trinitarian sense. Rather, we see it's the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. The Father is manifested us in Jesus' name. We receive the Holy Spirit in Jesus' name, John 5, 43, John 14, 26. So the name of Matthew 28, 19 is the name of Jesus. Hey, rebuttal time for historic Christian believers. Mm, very good. And we, um, we let's respond by saying that um, if, the, if the name of Jesus, if um, being baptized in Jesus' name uh, or the uh, or baptism in Jesus' name, uh, because it's in Jesus' name, has to be preceded by Jesus' name, and we have a, a almost a ridiculous thing here where it's, it talks about in, in Colossians chapter 3, verse 17, and it says that whosoever uh, in word or deed uh, do all in the name of Jesus uh, Christ. So if it says uh, if doing things in the name of Jesus Christ, okay, if you have to qualify for doing something in Jesus' name, if it has to be preceded by uh, the invoking the name of Jesus, then it becomes ludicrous. When I get out of bed, I say, I'm now getting out of bed in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, I am now putting on my shoes. In the name of Jesus, I am now walking out the door. In the name of Jesus. So we find no contradiction here between in the name of Jesus and the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. It is our position that the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit is not Jesus. You see, uh, UPC uh, believe and maintain that the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are all names of Jesus. We see the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit as separate, distinct entities, and that we can be baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit in the authority of Jesus and the coupler being Acts chapter 4, verse 7. Okay, we now have a three and a half minute uh, positional speech. As I've stated before, that the doctrine of salvation, particularly in the New Testament, is that the way of salvation is the same in every age because it's the same God. Does it matter for under the Old Covenant, the New Covenant, we're dealing with Jews, Gentiles, rich, poor, black, white, or whatever we are, there is only one way of salvation, 
that is by faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, a classic example of how there can be misunderstanding of uh, the relationship of baptism is in the passage which has been quoted several times from, I believe, Acts 22:16. Uh, and when you notice what the Greek says, since we brought up the subject of Greek, I don't claim to be a Greek scholar, though I did have uh, seven years of it. Uh, what you do find is that the word uh, "wash away your sins" has to be is in the past, and it's a past sort of a participle saying having already washed away your sins, you are to arise and be baptized. The same thing with the verses about um, uh, dealing with whose sins you've forgiven. Uh, once you remit them and release them, they will be. Actually, the Greek says you're to forgive those sins which have already been forgiven. So you're to pronounce forgiveness on those who have been forgiven. When you look in the New Testament, you do not find that baptism is that particular thing that marks the difference between